So for logistical reasons these days I can't do a full stack video but this is $100,000 worth of gold in physical bullion. For those in the UK that means around about 75,000. If I had these next 10 ounces that will give us around about 50 ounces and therefore around about £100,000 as well. So as I record the video gold is around about $2,500 something like that and it's just shy of uh, the £2,000 mark so by the time you see the video obviously this will all be back in the safe deposit box but uh, I wanted to make this and rather than be able to show off the whole stack I want to talk about some of the different pieces I have some of the different angles you have with the different parts of the stack and some of the reasoning behind it so generally I started stacking gold bullion in about 2020 I did buy some coins in 2018, I bought a few sovereigns, I bought a few best value one ounce um, and around then gold price was just over the thousand dollars, about 1100 and uh, in pounds it was about 900. So I was buying in 2018, around February, March time, after watching gold for a while. So at the time, you know, I didn't really know a lot about the market, I knew about the gold market, you know, the gold price and uh, commodities in general but I didn't necessarily know like the physical gold market and how it works. So I wanted to dip my toe in, you know, put some money into the physical gold and kind of waited for a while, didn't really do a lot until, you know, around 2020 where I started to accumulate a bit more. So here we have a range of different coins. Um, mostly I have gold sovereigns, have a lot of Britannias. The rest of the stack is basically just best value bullion sovereigns uh, and just general one ounce Britannias. So there's nothing uh, too special that's not here, apart from a few slabbed coins, things like that. But for today, we'll keep on topic and uh, we're going to take a look at some of the different pieces. So one of the sort of more popular things you'll notice here is the smaller pieces of gold. Whilst I do have some one ounce coins, like the Tudor Beast series, which I'm collecting here, these are a bit of a premium coin at the moment. Um, we'll see how things turn out in the future. You know, the physical bullion market, the premiums have been kind of squeezed by the prices going up so much in uh, you know the last year or so. And with that, you often find some of these coins might come up at quite low premiums. Whereas if you look at the Queen's Beast, the premiums on those still seem to be holding. But again, there have been times where they've been kind of squeezed too. So they're basically the same as a Britannia, but they are just a different design. Um, some of them maybe in the future will gain you know and appreciate and trade at a fair big premium maybe they won't but at the moment you know they they come out the new and they trade a little bit more than a Britannia but not by much so it's like a small extra outlay to purchase them up front and there's that potential in the future that they will perhaps appreciate more than just the gold itself in terms of the sovereigns you can obviously go best value just Go for a random chance, see what you get. Uh, with that, you know, you get varying conditions, usually pretty good, but some might be a bit older, some might be a bit newer. Uh, you just never really know. And some of the coins that I've had in best value, um, you know, they've been pretty nice, they've been fairly fancy, and then others have just been, you know, the current year. So this is Coronation 2023. Uh, you'll notice the more modern sovereigns are a lot more coppery coloured. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single year, but um, this, uh, these are some of the, they're called key dates or special dates where they just have this special design on one side. So some people like to pick these up. They generally come at a little bit more of a premium than your normal bullion sovereign, but only, you know, a small one. So these might come quite popular in the future. Um, and if not, you know, they're just a basic bullion sovereign. So I do like the designs on these. I would rather see, you know, this nice gold colour of times, you know, from sort of George and before. Um, even the sort of Gillicks, the young Elizabeth, you know, they're a nice colour as well. But uh, in terms of like favourites, if I was just purely stacking and had the opportunity to buy uh, sort of unseen, I would probably go for something like the Gillicks. Um, because they weren't circulated, they are usually pretty good condition and they're pretty popular, you know, people like the queens, it seems, better than some of the kings. Um, if you go for sort of the older ones, like the older Victorias, a lot of them are a bit more worn, you know, they were circulated at the time, 
similar with the Edwards, which I showed just a little bit earlier. This one is particularly good condition for bullion. Um, and then you've got some of the older Victoria portraits, which they're perhaps not quite as popular. And again, when you're buying these, they do tend to be a bit more worn, a bit more circulated. So, you know, they're all the same. They're all sovereign. But if you have the choice, you know, you can sometimes pick through and uh, choose certain things. Now, I do have uh, some nice Victorias here and there that have come in, you know, just being lucky, picking them up. Um, and some of them have come in just at best value kind of bullion prices. Uh, probably not the norm, you know, probably a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a lucky uh, lucky dip, really. But, you know, some of them have come in pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with them. Um, there's a lot of George Sovereigns. George Sovereigns are probably my favourite because, again, they tend to be... Uh, the right balance between not circulated on the whole and yet still that nice old gold colour. So I do like those. I have paid you know a bit of premium over the years for certain ones, certain dates and certain mint marks. So if you go down the collector route, you'll be looking for the mint marks and things. There are some more rare ones and some more common ones, some more pricey, some not necessarily more pricey, just perhaps harder to come by. So got some very nice condition ones which to be honest it would be worthy of grading if that's the sort of angle you want to take it might be a good exit strategy to lift the value but you know for me i'm happy just to keep them as is and uh, in this stunning condition so a little point to note as i make the video you know the prices have gone up uh, quite a lot since i bought these so whilst i was paying premiums to buy them in the past you know that seemed quite high they are now basically uh, in some cases under spot uh, what I've paid, and in some cases, you know, similar to a bullion sovereign now. So, um, yeah, it, you know, it comes up and down. Um, the market in general, you know, the prices will go up and down in the future, but it just, you know, a matter of holding on for the long term and not going too crazy all at once. Uh, ironically, though, some of my cheaper sovereigns were the first ones I bought. So, yeah, maybe I should have just gone all in, but <laughs> that might not necessarily happen again in the future. So I do have some other coins, like that very nice uh, Indian head coin, which is the incused one. I do also have the $10 as well. Now, I'm not really as much of a collector of American coinage, but I do just have some of the nicer ones that I like to, yeah, just like to look at, really. So although I don't see them very often, just nice to, nice to have. And, you know, the prices I've paid, I've sort of been a bit selective and waited for them just to come up. Uh, you'll notice this is a mounted sovereign. Um, bought this because it is the first design of Sovereign uh, in the 1817 to 1820. So we have this design here. It is a little bit worn, you know, as, as I probably would be at over 200 years old. Uh, but, you know, it, although it's mounted, there's still some nice detail there and enough to appreciate it without having to pay the sort of price of a one ounce coin for such a small piece. So we've got some half sovereigns here. They are essentially the same as a full sovereign. They are just obviously half of the gold content. They aren't half of the diameter, but they are half of the gold content. So you'll see a full on the right, half on the left. Halves are bigger than what you'd expect really because they are thinner and uh, like I say, still half the gold content. But a nice one if you are perhaps on a little bit more of a budget or just prefer going to have more coins than less coins. Um, obviously we talked about the one ounce coins, we've got some various other quarter ounce coins. This is obviously a new gold eagle and uh, this is the type 2, so we have liberty on this side. And obviously we have the eagle's head on the other. Uh, I've got a lot of shield sovereigns, there is a tube of them there, there's another tube of them at the back there. Uh, just a couple here to show you and again these are young Victoria. So. These are fairly old and in very good condition, you know, they might command a premium. They are quite hard to get hold of certain dates. And when I was putting together the date run of Sovereigns, uh, which is still incomplete, I'm still working on it. You know, there are just a few that are very high premium. So I've got to a bit of a sticking point really with that. You know, I can either basically stump up the extra cash for the same amount of gold, just very high premium gold. So I'm a bit of a sticking point there because... I just, I just kind of rather buy more George sovereigns than pay the, you know, super high premiums for the sake of getting a date that I haven't got. But you know, leave it with me. We'll see where that goes in the future. 
and uh, yeah there we have another beautiful shield sovereign so that's basically a, a big overview of the stack uh, you'll notice there is no gold bars here uh, we have some tents actually which i've not mentioned there's no gold bars here basically because in the uk we have um, certain tax rules at the moment as as it stands whereby the coins that are legal tender in the uk so sovereigns after a certain date and Britannia's, for example, they are treated better than bars. So in some countries, that's not the case. You know, if you're in Canada, perhaps Australia, um, you know, check obviously the area that is relevant to you. But certain countries are more interested in the gold purity. So in some cases, sovereigns being 22 carat, like a Krugerrand, for example, or a gold eagle, they would be penalised effectively. Whereas if you had a four nines fine gold coin like a Britannia, you would be better off uh, focusing on those. So pay attention to where you are. You know, don't just obviously buy sovereigns because I'm buying them, but um, take a look at you know what's relevant in your area. So that's an overview. Happy to answer any questions in the comments. Uh, a little bit of silver on the side there, just some you know fun dinosaur coins and some old circulation silver, which I just think is so cool. You know, imagine not necessarily going to the shops with these, but just some massive you know lumps of silver huge coins just stunning compared to what we get today the modern you know modern fiat uh, coinage that's been debased to you know steel and uh, not even that in some cases so hope you enjoyed this video talk to you on the next one